This is Twit. Give us a 30,000 foot view. What is Flogo and what problem is it solving? Okay, I can I can take that, and then Frank can can add a bit of detail. So so first cool. and foremost, um, we we basically say that Flogo is a is an ultralight um, edge microservices framework. Um, what that really means is um, is is we provide the tools um, from a framework standpoint, so visual development environment where you could visually model um, your your applications. Um, provide the tools for you to develop and build applications, compile these microservices, these applications, down into um, into statically compiled binaries that you can run on an edge device, so on an IoT gateway or something like that. Um, but we also introduce the capability to take the same logic or similar logic and then compile that down to a microcontroller so you could actually flash the microcontroller with uh, with specific application logic that you built in a visual environment uh, using Project Flogo. And uh, and do you, do you want to follow up on that, Frank? Yeah, basically, um, well, we've well one of the things that I'd like to say is that I've worked classically at Tipco doing uh, process integration and and uh, business process management. So kind of some of it is derived from that. This whole way to graphically create your application and uh, so you don't have to rely on kind of hardcore, you know, low level code in order to do things, and it's especially useful in things like uh, IoT, where if someone wants to create something, they don't need to know C++ specifically and uh, to get something going. So this will help you uh, create those applications easily and in a nice kind of web UI. Okay, well, I keep hearing the word edge devices. Can you can you explain more for, about what that means? Did I get it right? Is it like the, the refrigerator thing and the toaster controller and like that? Yeah, so um, fantastic question. So, so yes, you, you did fundamentally get it right. So I would say um, that the, the phrase IoT is, is, is kind of overused and misused in many ways. Um, you were right at the beginning of the show. You said it's the Internet of Things, and, and it very much can be the refrigerator. It can be the coffee machine that's, that's network connected and controllable via your mobile app and things like that. But also in an industrial setting, it, it could be sensors that are connected to um, you know, oil pumps in a, in a well that's out in the middle of nowhere. Um, sucking oil from the ground. Um, so so it, it is fundamentally, um, in, in the case of an edge device, it's fundamentally a, a device that's sitting out um, at, at the edge in the sense of like, uh, like your refrigerator or in an oil field or, or something like that. Um, so it's, it's really the, if, if you think about it, the, the evolution of computing kind of went, you know, um, client clients and then client server, then things moved to server, then things moved to cloud. And then there's this evolution of, of things starting to move back to the edge um, and running on the device itself. So, so basically running application logic where the data is produced. Well, now I, I was thinking that all these devices run uh, run a very small version of Linux. Am I am I accurate in that, or, or is this now we're in a new era? So yes, uh, so something like uh, here I've got I've got it actually a Pi in my hand right now, and that that's running Linux. It's you know an ARM based uh, ARM based device. Um, I think it's an ARM v6 for the Pi Zero or v7 for the Pi Three. Um, and that that's running a version of Linux, but there are devices, say the Arduino, like a, an M0, a, an ARM M0 as an example, um, that that does not have an operating system. So you've you've got flavors of both. Um, obviously, if you have an operating system, you've got more control and flexibility to do more advanced things. Um, but if you don't, um, then then you're limited. And if, if you're say doing an M0 or deploying app logic to an M0, then you're definitely limited to the kinds of app logic that you can deploy. But but again, with Flogo, you can you can build that application visually and deploy to either platform. Okay, so there's probably a lot of players in this space. What makes Flogo different? Yeah, so um, interestingly enough, if you do look at the the, the landscape of um, of different players that exist, um, obviously a lot of um, a lot of the other players have actually taken existing technologies and they tried to retrofit it to work in an IoT sense. So so take the the, the case of um, I don't know a Java framework um, or something that's built off of the JRE. Uh, 
clearly, you know, that, that's incredibly powerful. You can do all kinds of things with uh, with Java apps. But if you take that application and you deploy it to a um, an edge gateway or an edge device that, that has limited a limited set of resources, then you're fundamentally consuming all of the resources with your Java app and your JRE and all the other um, other OS dependencies that are required. Where in the case of Flogo, um, it's uh, Flogo is actually built using Golang, so um, so the binaries are statically compiled, um, roughly ten to fifty x smaller or lighter in wow. size. So if you take that app and push that to a device now, you're you're you, you you're saving system resources either for more applications or additional logic or more advanced logic, and then also the ability that exact same application model to compile to a a microcontroller where you've got you know thirty two k of of available space. And one of the cool things, I guess, about Go is that you have the, the in, in Linux, you would have had to fork separate processes, typically, to have uh, multiple uh, I, things going on at a time. Go has this uh, Go, Go routines, I think it's called, that has routine, it's like yeah. threads in Go, right. So that you don't have to have all the overhead of full Unix processes to do multiple things at a time, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and then the other beautiful benefit of Go is the um, the cross compilation. So I can compile for ARM, uh, ARM Linux, x86, Mac, things like that. So so you've got a, a wide variety of different platforms you could you can build for from the same code base. And, and what's the history of this project? How did it get started? Um, so interestingly enough, uh, the, the project just celebrated its first birthday um, last month. And, and basically, it, it kind of got started by um, by us looking at the landscape of um, of IoT integration projects that existed today, and we kind of took a step back and we said, essentially, that story that I talked about from a you know bloated uh, bloated framework standpoint, we essentially said, listen, if if you're really going to tackle IoT and do it right, then you need to build a solution from the ground up that focuses specifically on that particular problem case with the requirement of, of needing to be lightweight, um, needing to be performant, um, needing to be easy. Um, so so that's kind of how it started. Um, as far as why we picked Golang and things like that, I'll let, I'll let Frank, uh, Frank jump in there. Yeah, as for why we picked Golang, um, so classically at Tipco, we've been very Java-centric. Uh, we've been doing Java for a long time. But when we started this, we go, okay, we want to start this fresh. We want to keep an open mind, and so then we started looking around for mo at modern programming languages. I must admit, though, we did keep one bias: that we wanted something a uh, statically typed language because we wanted to ensure as much to catch as much issues as we could at compile time, especially since we're having third-party contributions into the uh, framework. So we started looking around, and with that constraint, we came across Go, and it kind of satisfied that. But then there's the other things that it mentioned that Matt mentioned: the fact that we can uh, statically compile everything. And one nice thing about uh, Go is that it compiles extremely fast, much faster than Java, so it doesn't so it's not a real burden if you are doing compilation. And it has other nice things like memory management and garbage collection. And at the end of the day, it just it since everything is small and self-contained, it's uh, much better than Java that brings along the baggage of a GRE. And also, in interpreted languages, it'll bring some sort of interpreter. Like if you're using JavaScript, you bring along Node and things like that. And uh, I, yeah. And, and one of the best things about Go is it's not Java. <laughs> it's just, yes. as, long as, you're, as long as you get away from Java, you're already making up five steps forward, I tell you.